Good morning, brothers and sisters. I want to welcome you this morning um, to the local church. My name is Brother Ron once again, and uh, we're going to get into a message that I titled, Blessed Are the Meek. Blessed are the meek. We find our text in uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 1 through 5. Once again, Matthew chapter 5, verse 1 through 5. The Word of God reads in Matthew 5, 1, And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain. And when he, had seated, he was seated, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning thanking you for this day, thanking you for this time, Lord, that you give us to open your word and, and study your word, Lord. So we pray, Lord, for anyone out there who is, who is struggling, Lord, that you would bring them comfort, Lord, that you would bring them healing, Father, whether it's spiritual or, or physical, Lord. You know the needs, Father. So we cry out to you, Lord, and we give you thanks. We give you honor, glory, and praise. And we know that you hear us, Lord. And we ask for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew 5 is a very well-known text. In fact, it has a name from Matthew 5 to 7. It's normally referred to as the Sermon on the Mount. And more specifically, in the beginning of Matthew 5, it's normally known as the Beatitudes, right? The, the blessings, if you will. Um... Most of the time when we hear sermons on meekness, normally what we hear is, is meekness is not weakness. And that is true, that some people have the idea that meekness is, is some kind of uh, weakness. And it is not. It is not. But we also see that um, it is so much more than just that, to have a meek spirit, to have a meek mindset. Um, and we will also see here that it is a picture of Jesus Christ's life and obedience to his Father. And how we are called to be conformed to his image. So in verse 1 we see that it says, And seeing the multitudes, once again, he went up on a mountain. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Just to give you a little background Jesus, in chapter 4, has just finished doing many miracles of healing and restoring people. And his fame, his, his, he was starting to become known all throughout the region, the Bible tells us. Now he sees the multitude of people following him. And notice it says he, he taught them saying that he opened his mouth and he preached. We live in a day and an age Many of you who know me, I've said this many times, that we are taught even from many pulpits that we are not to, to preach to people. That we are to just let our actions do our preaching. And I understand what people are trying to communicate. And there is a biblical principle there that, yes, our actions are to be consistent, but to be consistent with what we preach. Yes, we are called to preach to every creature the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are not called to just wait for people to approach us because they see a twinkle in our eye. We are called as the church, as Christians, to open our mouth as Jesus does here and to proclaim the message of the gospel. To proclaim that there is forgiveness and there is new life in Jesus Christ. So we should follow our Lord's example and not simply wait for people to approach us. And that brings us to verse 3, which says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What does it mean to be poor in spirit? What is poverty of spirit? Well, let me ask you, how much do you pray? Your prayer life will show how much you recognize and understand your poverty of spirit. Poverty of spirit is recognizing how much you need God, how much you rely on his power, his strength, and his spirit, not just to perform certain tasks, 
but ultimately to walk out the Christian life. That we can't live this life in and of ourselves. That we need the Spirit of God through faith in Jesus Christ to empower us to live out the Christian life. To be able to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. That is not a task that comes easy that are, or that is natural to any human being. That is a task. And to love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, and soul. That is a task that we need the Spirit of God to quicken us, to awaken us, to bring life to us. And to empower us to live out the Christian life. So poverty of spirit will be correlated to how much we go upon our knees and recognize how much we need God. Like the old hymn says, Oh Lord, how I need you. How, oh, how I need you, Lord. Poverty of spirit shows a spirit and, and, and why that is a blessing. Why, is, why it is a blessing to be poor in spirit. Because the more that you recognize your need for God, the more it should drive you to seek him out. And there is a blessing in the chasing down of his presence and his glory in itself. There is a blessing in that journey within itself. So the more that we recognize our need for God, it should drive us to seek him more and more in our prayers, in our uh, daily Bible studies and devotions, right? That we seek him out. Unfortunately, many of us become self-sufficient. We think we don't need God. We don't, we don't need his spirit to do whatever the task is set before us. And unfortunately, that's why many times we do fail. But notice this, also in Luke 6, there's the parallel to this verse. And it says, blessed are the poor. And some have, you know, talked about, well, what's the difference? Or, you know, it almost seems like it's talking about not poverty of spirit, but poverty in the sense of material blessings, right? And some have said, well, there's a contradiction there. No, there is no contradiction in Scripture. But there may be a contradiction or a misunderstanding in our understanding, but there is no contradiction in Scripture. The thing is this, think about it this way. Who is more, just on your own experiences, who is more necessarily open or do we see willing to seek out the Lord somebody who is rich or somebody who is poor you see somebody who's even materially poor recognizes how much they need God not just for the material blessing but also for a a, a total restoration of their whole lives and, and soul somebody unfortunate that's why Jesus said it's it's, it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into heaven. Now, it's not saying that riches themselves are, are bad or sinful, but unfortunately, the more riches that we attain in this world, material riches, we tend to get prideful. We tend to think we can fix all our problems by ourselves, that we don't need any outside help. We become self-sufficient. So it's harder for a rich man, but blessed is the poor who recognizes his need. And blessed is the one who is poor in spirit because he recognizes how much he needs God. And that brings us to verse 4 that says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Do you mourn? When's the last time, as one preacher said, that you cried over your sin? That you were weeping over your sin. Is there a desire to be holy? And is he, as he is holy, as the Bible tells us, is there a desire to be holy? Is, can you say, Lord, create in me a pure heart that desires your will over mine and your glory over mine? Because a soul that recognizes that and is seeking out that purpose in their lives will be blessed. They will be comforted. But also know that there's another sense where blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. We as Christians, we will not be accepted by this world. In fact, just recently we've seen, I don't know if some of you have seen in the news, there was a church that 
refused to shut down and somewhere in another state. And just recently, the whole church was burned down by arson. People who, you know, despised and, and whatever reason burned down this house of the Lord, this house of worship. So we're not going to be accepted or liked. We're not going to be the cool kids or the popular kids at the table. Our message will offend many. Verse 5, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So here we go. What, what does it mean to be meek? Well, like I've, I've taught before and I've heard myself, is it's, it's not weakness. There's a sense where your energy is not like a wild horse, but your energy is focused on something positive and, and, and where your energy is, is best used, right? So if you got a wild horse and then you have a horse that has been broken in to be ridden, now you can use that horse for very beneficial task. And in the same way, when we're walking without the Lord and we're living for ourselves, we are, we are wasting our lives. We are using our energy for futile and vain things. But when the Lord gets a hold of us and we focus our lives on loving the Lord God with all our heart and loving our neighbors as ourselves and serving our neighbors, then now that energy that we were using for negative can be used to advance the kingdom of God and bring, bring glory to the name of Jesus Christ. But really quickly, and I'll end here, in Psalm 37, verse 1 through 11, it also gives us a picture of what meekness is. That's Psalm 37, 1 through 11. Listen to what it says about meekness. Do not fray because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the new day. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fray because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fray, it only causes harm. For evil doers shall be cut off. But those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. And listen to this. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. So what does it mean to be meek? What is meekness? Meekness is the man who continues to do what the Lord has called him to do. They press on. They fight the good fight of faith. They're not discouraged if the progress of results haven't come in their timeline. They're faithful and consistent and focused on their path, even when it seems as though evil men prosper. They are not shaken, but they are trusting in the Lord. They are still, and they know their God. Remember that verse? These are the ones who are still, and they know their God. It doesn't mean they don't put feet behind their faith or they don't put actions behind their prayers. But they're not running around because evil men are prospering or there's bad things going on in the world. Therefore, they get discouraged or angry. Or No, they continue to follow, to, to, to hear the shepherd's voice and his sheep follow him, even in the midst of hard and dark times. Jesus is our example, and Jesus is the picture of meekness. He was always about his father's business, even in adversity, even upon the cross, even when he was accused unjustly and whipped and, and tortured. He still con continued to be focused upon the mission. He wasn't complaining. He wasn't asking what's going on. He knew what his mission was, and that is what it is to be meek. To be focused 
upon the mission and the calling and the work that the Lord has given you. We are called to be imitators of Christ. And some say, but Brother Ron, we will never achieve that this side of eternity. And that is true. But let me tell you this. One preacher told me. My child was younger. And I would walk and she was beginning to walk. She would maybe follow behind me. Say we were walking through a, a muddy field or something. And you know, many of you that have kids, you know as kids are, they will try to walk in your steps. And if somebody, a third party, was looking out, you know how kids could, you know, look kind of silly and funny as she's trying to keep the same stride and stay in the same footsteps. It probably wouldn't be a perfect representation. In fact, it would probably be a very poor present representation. But know this. She is trying, the child is trying with all their heart to follow in their father's footsteps. And in the same way, we're called to be imitators of Christ. Blessed are the meek. So in closing, remain faithful and productive in your vineyard. Be a good steward, whether or not everyone else is slacking off. They will give an account one day, and so will you and me. Let's make sure we hear, well done, and good, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the glory which I have prepared for you since the foundation of the world. So yeah, meekness is not meekness. I'm sorry, meekness is not weakness. But it is using your energy productively to bear fruit and not be distracted or discouraged by others, but focused on the task ahead of you. And as Christians, we are called to advance the kingdom of God and glorify the name of Jesus Christ. So onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before. Christ, the royal master, leads against the foe, forward into battle. See his banner go. May the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his light to shine upon you.